Aragon Connect. Uh, the main idea is that everyone in the team uh, has a better sense of what we've been building and what are the potential use cases that we are trying to address with the, with the new library. So as a first uh, step, what we would like to do is uh, start an uh, open discussion of the problems we are we are currently facing in the in the claim and, and this is our, some of the ones that we we think with Enrique and was uh, the idea of, of this is to open open the, to discussion of why you think this might be uh, current problems and if you also think there are other kind of uh, problem related to the to the current tooling and and why uh, a solution was needed so I you ask you if someone have some opinions on, on these topics? Yeah, jump on. Otherwise, I can also tell my own, uh, and Enrique will tell me this. Yep, I think we can even explain the, the problems we identified for Connect. And then later, if we get some questions or a few additional things, uh, we can totally just interject and okay. see. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, OK, this was uh, the first problem that it was something that uh, it get increasingly uh, evident with it with time and, and more experience into actually using the, the tool that uh, we've been building is that the client uh, was at the center of the of the RAM network and that was uh, even though the client is great uh, piece of tooling and one of the best ways to expose the users to a truly decentralized platform uh, there was a, a few assumptions that were were flow in that in that case because we we didn't expect that users could not be too much um, they don't care that much to security and they will be willing to compromise some of the of that security if they trust the third party that is offering the, the service so that was one of the main uh, flaws on, on having the client at the center of their own network and then we also have this other problem of uh, monolithic apps that is also related with the, with how the client was structured at, at first, because because if you think uh, that you want to give the, the users a super secure and and really uh, trustworthy experience, uh, you need to also uh, have this kind of uh, monolithic apps that they need to be secure inside the client and not being able to to be compromised by by attacks vectors uh, so this was one of the decisions when when creating the client and creating this kind of sandbox where every every app live but the one of the problems with that was that the the developers have no much room for for changing this and and having a less more room to, to experiment so that will be uh, an introduction for the for the third third topic the no customization that uh, enrique will also discuss a bit yep so as, as we had we got a segue into this topic of no customization as we saw that the client was the center of the argon network and the center meaning that all the down interaction was meant to happen in the client. But it turns out, uh, especially with the user research and product re research we've been doing this quarter, we've realized that users actually want a way to customize their DAOs and give them, a, give them a, a, an image and basically just make them their own. Um, even though we have a great design system, we have this client, which is extremely trustworthy, and you can manage super huge um, financial operations with it with no problem. In the end, community is the key to success in the DAO space. And so, of course, uh, if you go to the meme, uh, Gab, uh, Gabby? Yeah. Ahead, yeah. On the meme ahead, yeah. 
uh, users will always tell you, come on, you're giving me, you're giving me the super uh, powerful DAO framework that I really want to use, but uh, I can't really customize the experience for my users however I want it to be. Of course, this is suboptimal in terms of community building. We've, we've been seeing it a lot in terms of uh, other DAO frameworks, such as Molof DAO, having just this culture of customization mm -hmm. at front. Yep. And we can go to the uh, to the other topic, Gabby. Yeah. Yep. And so this ends up being uh, on Oregon Connect. And so we want to explain WTF is Oregon Connect. And so we can define it as a set of tools or a library that makes developing custom interfaces really easy for our own organizations. This is, of course, achieved by extracting all the tedious bits of complicated Ethereum data fetching for you and only providing a simple, foolproof API for you to use, which means that um, this brings a Web2 experience to Web3, to the Web3 base web, in, meaning that you can only make a few API calls and you will get all the data you need for um, your Argon organization. But um, with the old way, you have to use Argon API and subscribe to the client uh, workflow, which, of course, was not ideal. With Argon Connect, everything changes. With this library, you can just ask for the data you want, get it, and build a custom uh, front end so you can just push, push this data in and give your users a more personalized experience. Nice. Yeah, now what a like a quick recap, I would like to also introduce of the the way of uh, of a plumber, and this is to to have a bit of context of how we in the team we we start thinking about the, the different problems that we face and the way we we approach it, and this is also something that I think across the team is happening with the different initiatives that we take uh, after the last offsite when Patty. Uh, Brett and, and Luke work in this this new way of uh, structure the the whole process of of idealization. Uh, so uh, in in the plumbery we also address these different uh, points in as a different document and we have like this notion uh, first culture that that we we every every time we we have to discuss or or address some kind of of. Uh, documentation we, we were trying to write something in notion and notion and share it and discuss it so we have like first users sessions then we we, we went to the in, in, in initiative formation and we start writing what were the use case and and user personas that that you that we, we were using the the Aragon, uh, the Aragon connect and then uh, as soon as possible uh, even with a early version of toolkit uh, new ex experimentation start happening with Aragrid, as as was mentioned in previous in previous talks, and then we start actually once we have more validation of of uh, that the the users were actually looking for this, we start writing a, a document with a API design and finally starting to scope the the roadmap of what were the the deliveries, deliverables that we would like to to, to address. So this. This was a super nice experience and, and project. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want to add, add something, Andrea? Yeah, to add to this, um, it was, I really want to say that on the Plumbers team, uh, I feel that they've really set an example of what is the definition of moving fast, but also having a structured workflow and almost basically agile workflow. Um, we're having weekly things where we're discussing the, uh, the direction and roadmap of the toolkit that we have. And it's actually publicly available. We'll share it later. And the example set is that a lot of code just gets merged every single day. As Ali himself will say, we merge like a million, million lines of code a day. Of course, exaggerating. <laughs> but the time spent in review, it's really, really, really low. This allows for a lot of experimentation. And so uh, people in the sidelines like me uh, can just go and try and break the and try to break the, the library so we can have some usage some user uh, validation in, within the team and communicate this feedback really efficiently back to the team this has led to a lot of the features we'll showcase 
for 0 0.2. Yeah. And also on, the, on that note, we, the next slide, uh, talk about something that uh, Pierre uh, work. And as soon as we start uh, actually developing the library, we set up these principles that uh, uh, take the note of, of, the, of how we were approaching uh, this new library and how we want it to, to become for newcomers and for ourselves. So now look into yep. the yeah, new yeah. and the old. Yeah, we wanted to really contrast the new and the old because uh, we have the new thing, which is connect, and the old thing, which is the client. Both things are great, and they serve their, pur their purpose. And we'll see how the community will treat both the client and connect as time goes forward. But what we really want to showcase is that connect has a really low barrier to entry. As you'll see soon in the demos, uh, you realize that just uh, by installing the library into your front end and just starting to query the API, you can already just get building a simple front end. It's that easy. Well, the Argon app, well, building Argon, Argon apps and a custom Argon client before this was a bit more complicated as you had to do a bunch of manual stuff to get data from the Ethereum API. As soon as the graph came up, this became really easy. And we built this abstraction over the graph to also make it really fast, which means that we can resolve queries in a matter of milliseconds, which is amazing. Uh, instead of waiting for a minute to sync, for example, in the in the governance style from the Argon, uh, when the where the AVO votes uh, were held, um, that took a lot of time to sync. If we make that today with a connect-based um, interface, that will be extremely fast. And so, at the yep. same time, we also have a way of doing a custom UI, which is really easy. Uh, like basically, you can just build your own UI, uh, use whatever you want. Uh, you're not subscribed to anything locked in within the client. Which, of course, uh, the client is great for providing a really comprehensive experience across all DAOs. But this doesn't mean that for a community that really uh, or organizes, for example, uh, in Discord, and you only really want to see the votes in terms of a, of a user perspective, it's more optimal to use Connect and build a simple front end than to actually use the client and having to get, it, having to, get to know it really deeply so you can interact with it. Yep, you, can, you want to add something, Gabby? No, no, I think you, you cover really good. Um, to go to the next slide, we, where we try to uh, sum up the, the different moving pieces. And, yeah. Yep. Uh, yes. So we also have uh, a lot of moving pieces here, which is really interesting. But in the end, um, for the developer's perspective, it's really easy to use. And, re and we are having uh, documentation sprints really soon to just cement this as a, the easiest way to make a front end for a DAO. So first, we got the Argon Connect Core Library, which takes uh, care of everything, setting up everything for you. You don't have to care about uh, setting subscriptions. You don't have to care about fetching the uh, state from Ethereum. You just basically just need to care for this package to be an NPM so you can download it. That simple. Then you get the Argon Connect uh, connectors. This is basically along with the graph uh, subgraphs. This is what uh, this is the glue of the whole thing, because um, we get the connectors which provide a really simple API that you can query to get all the information you want, and you get the subgraphs which are a more uh, low level way of getting the information. But basically, we're using them as a database for all these transactions that happen on the on a DAO or a app, if it's a app connector. So you can just query with the, with the connector you or us will make. And so that way you can just get the, the data you want. Yeah, and, and to add to that, I think the, the, the main way to describe connector is it's like a bridge between the core library and the subgraph. So the core library can understand what the, the subgraph uh, information is, is telling to the to the library. And with all that, we we finally reached the what we have right now with the release that is the Argon Connect <laughs> and this awesome logo by Aldri. Which so, is amazing. <laughs> and yeah, now we are going to to demos and I will start. 
uh, by showcast a bit of the version two that and what are the features that we we are currently introducing and we are now having ENS support and you can call for example the uh, organization with just a name and the name of the library and that's it then you can also have subscriptions that will be uh, working in this way of calling the, uh, an event from the library and just uh, getting the, that subscription uh, working. Then we also introduce pagination, so uh, the information that we fetch is not that uh, that many, and you can control it uh, with a more uh, yeah more easily. And of course, all this is going to be more uh, understood once we do uh, actual demos of how it works. And then we also let me see. We have all the subgraph endpoints that, and these are some of the. Yeah. Other thing that I would like to show you is the how what is a subgraph because something that we we will talk in. But subgraph is the graph is this uh, technology that uh, allow you to bootstrap and review all the information that is available in the blockchain, and then uh, get. Uh, an state that you can query in a really easy way, and you will define this all these uh, entities like repositories, applications, uh, roles, permissions, all things that organizations actually have, even organization of course, and you can then tell the graph, hey, uh, I want to get all the from all the organizations, uh, give me the addresses and the apps that are uh, available. And we just do that, and the graph return this data for us to then uh, use in the Aragon Connect library. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the subgraph is have a lot of uh, technology inside that is doing for doing all that and really, really quick. So that's why the performance is uh, like day and night in comparison with previous uh, of fetching the information directly from the blockchain. And Looking a bit more into the next uh, features that we would like to include, we would like to support um, more transaction pass options. We would like to improve documentation and testing that are currently in underway. We would like to uh, have more subgraph because one thing that maybe we, we don't address is that we have a main subgraph that is this one, but then we, the way we think about it, we have a different subgraph for each application because um, that make it more uh, extensible for developers to to include their own uh, subgraph and connectors. So we would like to support the core subgraph of uh, the, all the Aragon uh, core apps. Then we would like support a legacy connector for Ethereum and have more uh, support for React libraries. And with that, I would like to uh, yeah, let Enrique to start showing their awesome uh, demos. Yeah, uh, we can go to the subgraph uh, really quickly again. Yeah, sure. Really want to add something about that. And yes. yeah, the things that uh, this subgraph, as I said, we're using them as a database for uh, so that we can then query them on with Connect. And so first, I really want to recognize the effort here that Ala did, which um, he went into a full PhD research mode and came out of his little cave saying, hey, I got universal subgraphs working. And so this thing is a beast. Uh, it's like it's to the point that we're pushing uh, the graph technology almost to its limits uh, because this, uh, this graph has a lot of entities. And so it takes a little while to sync. As this is basically a graph that can catch almost uh, all of the Argon organizations that have been created on mainnet. And so that means that you can just query for any organization there, and it should come up unless it has been deployed in a very weird way, so it's just deployed it manually. If so, you can, you can, still, uh, you can still be able to, to add it over there, but we're not going to get into that as basically this will require all the session by Ale, and I'm really sure Ale would like to get into subgraphs later on because again uh, this whole subgraph thing is a beast and this is what enables us to then 
just use Connect as in a really simple way to query for organizations and not have to wait like two or three minutes for the data to come in, as we do not have to replay the history of the whole blockchain and fetch all of these transactions ourselves, but the work is done by the graph. Nice. Yeah. So I was cool. Top percentage, so you can you can. Yep, sure. Um, let me see if yeah. Can you guys see my screen now? Yep. Awesome. Well it's it's um, coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, can you see my screen now? Yep. Sure? yep. I, I can still, okay. This is me. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Uh, please confirm if you can, guys. I see it. Yeah. Okay. okay. You want to have it bigger, uh, Enrique? Yeah, I might need to zoom in a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, good. So first off, um, I would like to show a few examples. Um, first, um, you have seen this Pokemon thing thrown out a lot, and we finally deployed it uh, for now. So it's this, it's this thing. And this is a whole front-end build with Connect. If you don't recognize this, um, this is actually a one-to-one -one copy from uh, th this thing called po Pokemon, which is actually the DAO Explorer for um, Moloch organizations. We build, this as, we build this as a form of query and also as an experiment to see, hey, we have connects. Uh, yep. I think, sorry that I, I read you, but I think some people can see the screen actually. Yeah, what, oh. I, what I would recommend is if you, um, if you just resize the window, make it a bit smaller and only share the window because maybe like the resolution is too high to, because yeah, yeah. can see. Yeah, yeah, let me see, wait. Are you using 52 inches uh, TV or so? <laughs> no, no, it's just uh, <laughs> yeah, that's like like ultra, 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 ultra wide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, come on, yeah, you just gotta find the. Wait, in a little while. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm gonna share my screen now again. There we go. Uh, should be good now. Much yep. better. Yeah. Awesome. Yep, now it works. Awesome. Okay, so as, as I was saying before, this is a one to one copy of the uh, Moloch um, Explorer called Pokemon. So it's, that's why it's called Pokegon. And so I think it's a nice name. And you can already see some of the features Connect has. This is not everything, but uh, you can build this really fast. As you can see, I'm actually getting a DAO with an ENS name resolution right there. We also have all the token information over here in a really easy manner. It's truly really just an API call, and that's it. And so basically, that's how you build this. Uh, you can also see the holders, and you can also integrate things like three box super easily because Again, it's just data. You're now handling data in this really easy and old school manner, let's say, for people that, let's say, uh, do not work uh, with blockchain tech. Uh, it's really use, uh, it's really useful to just manage data and with like, when you're working with a smart contract, it, it can be a bit harder. But with Connect, uh, it's really easy to do this. And so you can see that we, we actually get the profiles from people here really easily. You can click this one and go to scan, no biggie. Right? And so this is really easy to build again. Again, this is just like one or two API calls at most. One to connect, one to three bucks. That's it. Then with the votes, um, and you can see like all the votes here, who created it, the start date. You can view proposals and expect them. And yes, this is can be built in a matter of like in a matter of hours if you really went real fast, or in a few days if you, you went if you just went down the chill route and just like trying to build this and trying to explore the library. However, I'm not going to, I'm not going to explain the whole code base of Pokemon to you. I've actually, we've actually broken it down in a few simple examples so that you can really see what's happening. 
this is going to this is going to get a bit more technical, so don't be afraid to ask questions. But you'll see uh, how little code you need to actually achieve uh, what we're having here. The first one, I really like it. It's this one. We actually, I don't know if you remember, but in one of the experiments uh, showcases in the set of variable one, we actually had the Matos DAO. And so it resurfaces res today to a DAO if I would connect. And so we can see uh, Matos DAO with Lewis at the front and finalizing about our connect. And so we can see we get the votes, uh, we get the latest vote information, just like if, if it was Twitter feed or whatever, we get all the votes, uh, we get if it's active. And so this is really interesting. Look at the code. I mean, if you have ever uh, had some curiosity and seen the amount of code you need to funnel this into an Aragon app, you'll be surprised. But Connect, it's really only just this amount of code. And in reality, all the Connect code there is here, it's really just this part. So you can see we are actually connecting to an organization with the address and to Rinkeby, this DAO is in Rinkeby. We're getting the apps, just then getting the voting app address, connecting to the voting app address, and also then just getting the votes. But of course, what if you have a lot of votes? Uh, what if I want to skip the first two and get the first three? No biggie, we can do that. First uh, three, skip. To. So we got stuff like pagination baked right in to connect in a really easy manner. And you can see there, now I got three bugs. Like the, the page didn't even reload uh, that heavily. It really, is, it really is just an API call and just replace state and you get this beautiful front end really easily. And so, yeah, you may be wondering, sure, but what about token information? No big as well. We got another example here showcasing the Lex DAO organization. And this whole information is dynamic. It's fetched from the chain using connect and the graph. And you can see that uh, here, LexDAO tokens called LexDAO member, symbol is LDM. 35 people actually hold the token and we got the supply invite here, which I'm not gonna call out because it's a really big number. But we can then see the holders with their addresses and their balances. It, this is really easy and again, Look, it's really simple code. It fits, it fits in one page. And the connect code, it's really just this part. Again, if you had to ask me how much code you need to use Argon API to fetch this into the client due to, to the security uh, concerns, it's a ton of code because we're sacrificing ease of use for uh, security. But here, you can just have the data in the traditional manner and it's then really, really easy. Now, uh, we get all of these token information, really nice, but now you may have a question, which is, okay, we can get token holders, we can get balances, we can subscribe to votes, um, we can send transactions, but what if I made, what if I was an arrogant app developer, I made my own app, I maintained it, you know, and I only wanted to just uh, make a subgraph for my, um, my app and actually fetch information uh, with connect and real days, you can do that. We have uh, custom connectors. We're gonna show off one of the experiments, uh, which was issuance uh, plus Karma DAO, which is just, this is the live Karma DAO in Rikibi. If you remember the experiments review with it a few days ago, we talked about it and how we made the template. But now uh, we can actually turn with DAO FI, this with connect as well. As issuance has its own subgraph and its own voting connect uh, and, and its own connector. This I actually made this yesterday. I was I wasn't even looking to get it in, but the reality is it's so easy to make this that it's just a no-brainer to use connect instead of use, using the graph. It's that easy. So you can see that it matches here. We have one policy here, and we get one policy here. So that's really cool. And you know. This is the potential with uh, custom front ends because, for example, this is the landing for Karma DAO. And so it just looks, uh, the, sa it looks the same. And, and we can totally integrate that into the page really easily with Connect. And again, look, uh, this is even more surprising. You can even make, uh, make your own subgraph connectors really, really small and easy to use. This is the code needed to fetch uh, all of this. Of course, 
this will fetch more policies if we were going to create more. But now there's only one policy, so it's only fetching one. But the reality is that with three lines of code, I can get a custom app uh, fetching data from the organization. Of course, I have to build this custom voting connector, and I have to build a DAO subgraph. But with the documentation available from the graph and support from the available um, connectors, it's really easy to build this. This didn't take more than one hour and 15 minutes. And out of that one hour and 15 minutes was actually setting up the graph uh, and the CLI. The connect part was really simple and really easy. And yeah, these are the examples we get. And as you can see, it's extremely easy to build with connect. There's endless possibilities, not only for organizations, but for means. And actually, uh, we can just have uh, people building Argon apps, building subgraphs for them, using Connect and just building super custom experiences um, in a weekend, like a hackathon. And this is the value proposition that Connect has. It lets you build really easily on top of Ethereum of the, on, and on top of Argon, and just really get this information in a really easy manner without too much hassle. And on the demo side, that was everything. And if you have any questions, please shoot. Nice. Um, so I, I have a question. Um, I think this looks amazing. Um, for, as, a, as a front end guy, this is just like this is this is perfect. Um, I guess it's it's maybe a kind of um, a wider question, but I wondered, you know, our intentions to use this in our own, you know, client would it potentially just replace Aragon JS and and um, you know would it underpin a lot of our own sort of front ends or is that more of a longer term? Sort of goal. I'm just wondering how soon we can kind of start using this sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of depends on the scope of what we're talking about because um, the reality is that we have to build all these services that we then need to maintain to use Connect. But of course, uh, we can totally start swapping out some of the client stuff with our Connect. It's it can be done, and of course, um, uh, even like Brett would like to chime in here. But I guess the timeline is, as time goes on, uh, we're looking to actually swap out some of the client things when connect. But in the end, the infrastructure for Argon GAs and Argon apps is still needed as the client um, still serves at this, as this admin tool um, that DAO administrators, for example, can just use to manage things like permissions or agreements themselves, which will still happen on the client. But of course, uh, this, this is still a really good question. And the reality is that time will tell because we have to see how the community adopts Connect to build in front ends and how people actually feel about using the custom front end rather than using the client, which we are estimating that, we'll, that people will actually receive custom front ends as their preference. But of course, um, the community has to decide for us in this regard. Awesome, yeah. It's, it just looks so so cool. Like, well done, everyone involved. It looks amazing. Nice. If there are other questions, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, I think it's we can go with a recap and try to get the main highlights of what is around Connect and what it's useful for and how it solved the, the problems that we first addressed. And around Connect give communities superpowers. And as Enrique just demo is super nice how easily you can start working with it. Around Connect allows developers to integrate Aragon at a more rapid pace than before. And finally, Aragon Connect unleash the Aragon organization's potential by reaching a, a more wider audience than, than before. And, and yeah, I think those are three key takeaways that are why Connect could become really, really important. 
Actually, one question I read in the um, in the Getting Started guide that Pierre pushed like 30 seconds ago, that only Ring TVI is supported by the graph connector. Does that mean that people need to use like a different the graph node or something like that uh, if they are not using Ring TVI? Uh, what what you what was the uh, like? Does the graph connector support mainnet too? Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, the thing is that um, the connector supports, uh, uh, it varies depending on the graph you're using. Um, because, of course, you can make the, the graph subgraphs in both mainnet and ring to be. And, of course, um, you only have to configure your connector to be able to get uh, the chain ID, of course. Yeah, and as default, we, we use the mainnet subgraph and, and connector. And then if people configure it, you can also use ring -a -a. Yep. Awesome. So you can use this for your mainnet organization without too much hassle, which is great, which means that because it means that you can just start building today with this tool. And you basically can just go and replicate the core Argon uh, workflow with this tool, which is, is still an alpha and it's still 0 0.2. And we already have these sorts of superpowers. Who knows what we could be doing three months, for example. Nice. And if anyone have any more questions, we can go ahead and add the connect lunch party. Thanks. Yeah, the, uh, the last question here is, is one mainnet. And <laughs> I think it was actually, what was it, yesterday or two days ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess uh, at the uh, last words uh, before we can adjourn, uh, if Gabby wants to add anything, but I really want to also like just uh, give some shout out to the unsung heroes here because the plumbery team is Ale, Pierre, and Gabby primarily, but people like Patty, Luke, and Brett have been pushing for this uh, user research experience, which has really marked uh, the, develop the development of this tool. And I think it's propagating to other parts of the team as well. And that's really great. And now I feel that with this tool, we've made a super awesome work, uh, work in terms of getting this correctly and talking to users and actually using, that, uh, using it ourselves to feel the pain that users will feel if we were actually using this tool. So I don't want to say that this is a team effort, even if only three to four people actually contributed to the code, to the code, because this principle uh, trickled down uh, to the development uh, of, of this library, and it ended up becoming this base of a thing, even in an alpha version. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And it makes the whole process a much more rich and and yeah, the end product becoming much more interesting in the end. And finally, I think we already also have the documentation site on, so you can go to connect.aragon.org and check it out. <laughs>